Bitcoin is often called digital money, but Andreas M. Antonopoulos argues that it's so much more. In the Internet of Money, Antonopoulos explains that Bitcoin isn't just a currency. It's a revolution in how we think about money, trust, and power. Through a series of insightful essays, he explores the philosophy behind Bitcoin, the problems it solves, and the opportunities it creates. Let's unpack these ideas and see why Bitcoin is more than just money. Part 1. What is the Internet of Money? Throughout history, technological breakthroughs have transformed how we communicate and share information. Antonopoulos compares Bitcoin to the Internet. Just as the Internet revolutionized how we exchange information, Bitcoin is revolutionizing how we exchange value. It's not just a currency. It's a new protocol for trust and economic interaction. By understanding Bitcoin as part of a broader technological shift, we can see its potential not just as money, but as a platform for innovation. Part 2. Why Bitcoin Matters One of the central problems in any economy is trust. Traditionally, we rely on intermediaries like banks to facilitate transactions. But this system is slow, expensive, and vulnerable to corruption. Bitcoin eliminates the need for intermediaries by using cryptography and blockchain technology to ensure trust between participants. Antonopoulos describes Bitcoin as a trustless system, not because it lacks trust, but because trust is built into the protocol itself. It's like a machine that ensures fairness without needing a referee. According to Antonopoulos, one of Bitcoin's most powerful features is its ability to include the unbanked, those who don't have access to traditional financial systems. There are over 1.7 billion unbanked people worldwide, many of whom can now participate in the global economy with just a smartphone and an internet connection. Bitcoin democratizes access to financial tools, making it possible for anyone, anywhere, to store value, make payments, and engage in commerce. In traditional systems, governments or banks can freeze accounts, block transactions, or impose restrictions. Bitcoin, however, is censorship-resistant. It allows individuals to transact freely, regardless of their location or political situation. Antonopoulos argues that this is especially critical in authoritarian regimes where financial freedom often translates to personal freedom. Part 3. How Bitcoin Works Bitcoin operates on a decentralized network, meaning no single entity controls it. This decentralization is what makes Bitcoin so revolutionary. It's like comparing a traditional power grid, where all energy comes from one source, to a solar-powered neighborhood where everyone generates their own energy. The more participants there are in the Bitcoin network, the stronger and more secure it becomes. This is a sharp contrast to centralized systems, which become more vulnerable as they grow. The blockchain is Bitcoin's foundation. It's a public, decentralized ledger that records every transaction ever made. Imagine a notebook where every page is shared, verified, and locked by thousands of participants. Once a block is added to the chain, it's nearly impossible to alter. This transparency and security are why Antonopoulos calls the blockchain a trust machine. It replaces human institutions with mathematical certainty. Mining is the process that keeps the Bitcoin network secure and decentralized. Miners use computational power to solve complex puzzles, validating transactions and adding them to the blockchain. The first miner to solve the puzzle is rewarded with newly created Bitcoin. This process, called proof of work, ensures fairness and prevents fraud. Over time, the reward for mining decreases, which limits Bitcoin's total supply to 21 million coins a feature Antonopoulos calls digital scarcity. Part 4. Bitcoin's Broader Implications Antonopoulos introduces the idea of Bitcoin as programmable money. Beyond simple transactions, Bitcoin can enable smart contracts, agreements that execute automatically when certain conditions are met. 
This opens the door to a world of decentralized applications, from crowdfunding to supply chain management. Bitcoin's decentralized model isn't just about money. It's a blueprint for new forms of governance. Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, or DAOs, use blockchain technology to operate without central leadership, making decisions through collective agreement. Antonopoulos sees this as a glimpse into a future where power is distributed rather than concentrated. In the Internet of Things, Bitcoin could serve as the native currency for machines. Imagine a self-driving car paying for its own fuel or parking using Bitcoin. Antonopoulos describes this as an ecosystem where devices can interact economically without human intervention. Part 5. Addressing Challenges One of the most significant challenges that Bitcoin faces in its journey towards widespread adoption is its inherent volatility. This issue of price fluctuations can be quite concerning for many potential users, as Bitcoin's value can swing drastically in a short amount of time. Andreas Antonopoulos, a well-known advocate for Bitcoin, acknowledges this issue and explains that the price volatility is a natural and expected part of the cryptocurrency's growth process. He suggests that Bitcoin, like many other emerging technologies in the past, is still in its early stages. Just as the Internet, when it was first introduced, had its own set of unpredictable challenges and growing pains, Bitcoin's volatility is a temporary phase. Over time, as Bitcoin gains wider acceptance and adoption across various sectors, its price is likely to become more stable. This trend of increased stability is common in the maturation of groundbreaking technologies, which initially experience chaos, but gradually settle as they become more widely used and understood. Another major concern critics often bring up is Bitcoin's energy consumption. The argument here is that Bitcoin uses a significant amount of electricity, which has raised environmental concerns, especially given the large-scale mining operations that require substantial energy resources. Antonopoulos, however, points out that much of the energy used by Bitcoin's network comes from renewable sources. This is an important distinction because it shows that Bitcoin's environmental impact is not as negative as some critics claim. He further emphasizes that Bitcoin's energy consumption is not just a cost. It serves a crucial purpose. The energy used by Bitcoin miners is what secures the decentralized global financial network, ensuring that transactions are safe, transparent, and immutable. This decentralized system, which operates without a central authority or intermediary, is one of Bitcoin's core strengths. While the energy used in the process may seem high, Antonopoulos argues that the value Bitcoin provides in terms of securing a borderless, transparent, and censorship-resistant financial network far outweighs the costs of its energy consumption. Part 6. Why Bitcoin is Revolutionary Andreas Antonopoulos strongly argues that Bitcoin represents a monumental shift in the way we think about money and its role in society. He explains that Bitcoin is not simply a new form of currency, like the dollars or euros we are accustomed to using every day. Rather, Bitcoin signifies a fundamental transformation in how we understand and interact with financial systems. It's not just about exchanging value. It's about redefining trust. Bitcoin offers a new way to establish trust without relying on traditional intermediaries like banks or governments. This is achieved through its decentralized structure, where trust is built into the network itself through a process known as blockchain technology. Antonopoulos suggests that Bitcoin's influence goes far beyond just digital money. It provides a new framework for organizing economic activity, creating an open and transparent system that anyone can participate in regardless of location, background, or financial status. This shift allows for greater inclusivity and access, giving people who were previously excluded from traditional financial systems the opportunity to engage in the global economy. But the significance of Bitcoin doesn't stop there. At its core, Antonopoulos emphasizes that Bitcoin represents freedom, freedom from financial oppression, freedom to innovate, and freedom to transact 
without the need for third-party intermediaries. Traditionally, financial systems are controlled by centralized entities like banks, governments, or corporations, which often impose restrictions, fees, and barriers to entry. Bitcoin, on the other hand, removes these intermediaries, enabling peer-to-peer -peer transactions directly between individuals. This level of financial autonomy is especially impactful in regions where people may face economic hardship, inflation, or oppressive regimes. Antonopoulos believes that Bitcoin has the power to empower individuals on a personal level, offering them greater control over their wealth. Conclusion The Internet of Money In the Internet of Money, Andreas M. Antonopoulos challenges us to see Bitcoin as more than just a digital currency. It's a technology with the power to reshape economies, empower individuals, and redefine trust in the digital age. Bitcoin is more than an investment. It's a movement. By understanding its principles, you're not just learning about money. You're exploring the future of value and trust. Are you ready to join the revolution?